Okay, in this video, we're going to look into pulse width modulation, PWM. Now, PWM is a very efficient way to control the speed of a motor, the brightness of a light bulb or LED, or control the power to a heater. Now, in this video, we're going to look into building this circuit here. It's a little PWM circuit I built on my breadboard. And I'm using logical gates, so there's no microcontroller. And that's going to con control certain devices. So I have it hooked up to a little gear motor. So I could actually control the speed of the gear motor using my little PWM circuit. So I could turn it on. So I could start off slow. And I could ramp up to maximum speed. So I have total control of the motor from stop to full speed using PWM. So what we do, we send pulses to the motor at a certain rate. And the wider the pulse, the more power to the load. And the narrower the pulse, the less power to the load. Now we send it at a certain frequency, so we'll have an on-time pulse width and an off-time pulse width in the, in the period of the frequency, and that will determine the duty cycle of the PWM. So by controlling the duty cycle, we can control any load from, from zero or from no power to maximum and anywhere in between. Okay, I've connected a little 12-volt light bulb to my PWM circuit on my breadboard. I could vary the intensity of the light bulb by feeding in a PWM signal from 0% duty cycle to 100% duty cycle. You can see I could bring it on, it's just barely on, I could bring it all the way up to 100%. That's pretty bright. My camera is compensating for the light. I could take it down, there's 50%, and I could take it all the way down to zero. You can see I have total control over the filament. You can see I could just bring it barely on. So this is very efficient because my MOSFET transistor here is either on or off. It's either in saturation or cutoff. And if you can switch between those two states very quickly, there'll be little or no dissipation in, in the MOSFET itself and it'll run really cool. So it's very important that we drive the MOSFET properly so we have very low power dissipation. Okay, I have my scope hooked up to my PWM circuit on my breadboard and I'm monitoring the gate of the MOSFET transistor. Now that controls the on-off state of the transistor and I'm feeding a 50% duty cycle to the gate and you can see it's pretty clean. There's no ringing. Now I could vary the duty cycle to the gate. I could bring it down. Bring it all the way down to zero so the light bulb would be off. Now I could bring it up. Now the brightness of the light bulb would be, would be increasing and I could bring it all the way up to maximum so that would be maximum brightness. Also you'll notice when I'm varying the duty cycle of the signal that my frequency also changes. Now normally that shouldn't happen it should stay constant. Now that won't affect the operation of our circuit, but once we get into the schematic diagram of how the circuit works, I'll show you why that the frequency is changing as I change the duty cycle. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my PWM circuit that I built on my breadboard. In the heart of the circuit is a CD4093 Schmidt trigger NAND gate. And there's four NAND gates in the package. You can see them here. There's one, two, three, and four. Now the inputs are connected together so they're configured as inverters. Now the NAND gate on the very left forms an RC oscillator which generates the PWM signal out of pin 3. And the duty cycle is controlled by this pot. So we could vary this pot from 0 to 100% duty cycle out of pin 3. Now that's, that signal is fed into this buffer. So there's three NAND gates in parallel to get better drive. And the output of the buffer is fed into this driver which is two transistors, an NPN and a PNP. And that's driving the gate of the MOSFET transistor. Now when the MOSFET transistor comes on, it energizes the load. And if the load is inductive, I have a freewheeling diode across the load to take care of any transients. Now I'm decoupling the power supply with a 470 microfarad capacitor and a 0.47 microfarad capacitor. Because a high value electrolytic is basically inductive at high frequencies. So it, it doesn't filter any high frequencies very well. It's not effective. So I have this 40.47 microfarad in, in, uh, in parallel to take care of the high frequencies. Okay, I just want to cover some basic RC oscillator circuits. Now this is the most common. It's the most simplest one. So we have a resistor, a capacitor, and an inverter. So when the output of the inverter is high, it's going to charge up the capacitor through the resistor until the voltage on the capacitor reaches the threshold voltage to trigger the inverter. Then the output will go low. Now it's going to discharge the capacitor through the resistor. Now action will alternate back and forth and we'll get a square wave 
output on the inverter, which will be around 50% duty cycle. Now if we add a couple of steering diodes and two resistors, this is the fixed duty cycle output. So on the charge cycle, it's going to go through this diode and this resistor, so it's going to charge the, this resistor and this capacitor. Now on the discharge cycle, it's going to go through this resistor and diode. So we'll have a different charging time for the on and off, so this will give us a fixed duty cycle output. But now if we put in a pot onto the two uh, steering diodes, now we could vary the pot and we could get a, a variable output from 0 to 100% on this RC oscillator. Okay, back to our main schematic. Now when we vary the position of this pot, it's going to change the duty cycle output of pin 3 from 0% to 100%. Now the value I'm using here is 1 mega ohm, but you can use anything from 1 mega ohm to 10k. You just have to change the capacitor accordingly to get your desired frequency. With these two values I'm getting about 1 kilohertz. Now the 680 ohm resistor in series with the wiper is there for when the wiper goes to the extreme ends, there's always some resistance in the loop. Now the charge resistance plus the discharge resistance through the pot will always be the same no matter where the wiper is. So theoretically, no matter where the wiper is, the frequency of this RC oscillator should always be the same. It should be constant. But what's happening, we have a diode, which is a nonlinear device, and as we change the wiper, resistance uh, decreases. The resistance of the diode will, will also change too. So that's why when we change our duty cycle using this pot, our frequency also changes. So if you want constant frequency with a PWM uh, circuit, then you have to use a microcontroller and that will keep the frequency constant. Okay, over to the MOSFET driver circuitry. We have two transistors. We have an NPN and a PNP and they're configured as emitter followers. Now they're driving the gate of the MOSFET transistor. Now the MOSFET transistor has a capacitance from the gate to source. And we have to charge and discharge the capacitor very quickly to turn the transistor on and off. Now we don't want to dwell in between the on and off state so we want to do this very fast, so that's why we have these two drivers. So when the NPN transistor comes on, it's going to charge up the capacitor, and when the PNP transistor conducts, it's going to discharge the capacitor, and it will do that very quickly. Now there's also a capacitance from the gate to the drain, it's called a Miller capacitance, and we have what they call a Miller effect. Now this Miller effect actually amplifies the capacitance from the gate to source, so we have to really drive this uh, hard, to switch the transistor on and off very fast. But sometimes if we drive it too hard, we'll get, a, we'll get spikes into the, into the gate, and if we have any stray inductance, we'll get, we'll get a ringing on the gate, and we don't want that. So sometimes we'll have to put a, a small resistor in, in the gate lead, or sometimes I use a ferrite bead. So it's very important to drive the MOSFET properly, so, we don't, so it runs efficiently, and we don't get any ringing on the drain or on the gate, which can destroy the MOSFET transistor. Okay, here's my high current test setup for my PWM circuit. And I have a halogen headlight bulb hooked up to the circuit so I can control the intensity of the light bulb. Now the MOSFET is going to pull a high current to drive this uh, halogen headlight so I don't want to have it on too long because I don't like putting too much current through these, uh, through these breadboards. So I can turn it on, I can bring it up so it's at zero right now. And you can see I, I'm, I can bring the intensity up and she's getting pretty bright. Now my camera is actually compensating, so you actually won't see the, how bright that actually is. It's pretty bright. I could try this. There I'm controlling my halogen headlight with my PWM circuit. Okay, now you know how this PWM circuit works. So this is a good circuit to start with. You could breadboard the circuit and do some experimentation. But if you want to get advanced, you want to run some heavy loads, at high speed, I suggest building a PC board because I don't like running high currents through the, these breadboards. Plus, there's a lot of stray inductance and capacitance, which could give you some problems. So, I hope this uh, video gives you some ideas how you can get familiar with a PWM circuit.